Dean Rosman and Jace Wino here. Jace Wino. With chemicals. And stuff for a calorimeter. Nice. So we have a whole lot of chemicals here. What's that one? This one's um, hydrochloric acid. This one is sodium hydroxide. What are the molarities, Dean? One. One M. Yep. Yep. One mole per liter. What's the dimensions of molarity? Stuff per volume. Wow, that's exciting. This is a lot of chemicals. No way. What we have next is a glass stir stick. What is this? A Jace? thermometer. That's a thermometer. What does thermometer measure? Heat. No, temperature. Close enough. <laughs> we also have two styrofoam cups used to hold in heat. And this circly cylindrical piece of styrofoam, which is used for a topper. And to hold in the heat. And to hold in the heat. And then you take stir stick and thermometer and insert, insert, calorimic tour. Calorimic tour. Sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, 15 mils of each, milliliters, one, two, and our calorimeter. What's going on in here right now, Dean? Uh, right now, we're measuring the temperature of each of the solution. And as of right now, we have a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius, which is approximately room temperature. How does knowing the initial temperature help us, Dean? It helps us measure the change when we combine the two solutions in the color. One. What do we have here, Jace? We still have our two solutions, 50 milliliters of each, and we're about to mix we're about to mix them. Are yes. you serious? Acid-based neutralization. What kind of heat's going to come out of this, Dean? Exothermic, probably. Oh, let's test it. Wait, we have to prepare our calorimeter first. Good call. 50 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Are you ready? Yep. 50 mils of sodium hydroxide. We're at a starting point of 25 degrees Celsius. And it's closed, and we're ready. And I'm stirring. Bronsman here with our calorimeter. Looks like our max temperature has been reached at approximately 29 degrees Celsius. Hey, Dean. Hey, Jace. What's going on? Not much. What do we have here? This. Is our heat equation? Q stands for heat. C is the specific heat of water, and we're dealing with water because both these solutions are aqueous, aka dissolved in water. M is the mass of our system, or 100 milliliters. 50 plus 50 equals 100. Wait, wait. I have a question. Yeah, How do that? milliliters translate to grams? Good question, Dean. The density of water is one gram per one milliliter. So if we have 100 milliliters, we can assume we have 100 grams. Wow. Yeah. Now, delta T transfer stands for the change in temperature, which is in units Kelvin, and then our mass is in units grams. Specific heat is in joules per gram Kelvin, which also means the amount of energy it takes, or heat, to raise one gram of water, one degree Kelvin. You see the grams of the Kelvin cancel, we're left with the tools or units of heat. Welcome back to the blackboard, Jace. What do we have here? This is our modified heat equation. Using the data we got from the experiment, right? Precisely. And this is our final temperature, minus our initial temperature, which gives us our change in temperature. So why are they Celsius. in Celsius? Well, you see, Dean. One degree change in Celsius equals one degree change in Kelvin. There is no scale change. That's why we can interswap them interchangeably. Here, here, and that's it. Interswap interchangeably? Yes. <laughs> that's so cool. We have our specific heat of water, known to be 4.184 per gram Kelvin, and our mass of the system, 100 grams, and our change of temperature, six degrees Kelvin. What does that give us, Dean? 2,510.4 joules. It's a lot of joules. Is it? Yeah. Cool.